Okay, here's a uh, analysis on our uh, website of of how we do. It's in one of our internal websites that we programmed ourselves, but basically it's how we uh, how we analyze these long period strings of uh, of random public keys. Um, we tend to use in our analysis keys that go from tw uh, 12 bit up to 32 bit, and we can go much larger than that, of course, too. Uh, but that's on a different on a different platform where we're analyzing strings of numbers. It's a different way of looking at it. And um, and but basically, this is where we get because all math scales, you know, pretty much. So uh, so it doesn't really matter kind of where you are in it once you find the pattern how it works, and it all scales infinitely. But basically, what this is looking at is a public key of of 12,794,791, and it has a period length of 2.1 million digits, and the first prime factor is 3,727, and the other is 3,433. You tend to get numbers that are similar like that when you're uh, limiting it to a particular size bit. And, uh, and so what you'll find here is on the right side, the right side tells us the first prime shows up in the string, 232 times, the second prime shows up 209 times, the third prime, or sorry, first prime palindrome shows up 214 times, and the second prime palindrome shows up 227 times. Now this also predicted, using the prediction algorithm, that we would have uh, 836 uh, appearances of primes and palindromes. We have a bit more than that, um, so that's you know, one of the outliers, but usually this will never go greater than a ratio of, uh, it, it, it tends to oscillate between pi over seven and pi over nine and the center being pi over eight. This is when we're looking at both the, uh, the palindromes and the regular prime numbers. So what this is right here is a graph that shows all the locations inside the period string of all the prime factors. And, um, and you can see that it's very, very consistent all the way through the entire length of the period. Now, the y-axis on this is the same 2.1 million digits that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's the length of the period. And then each of this is a dot plotting of, uh, of where the, the primes are. And you can see the indices of where they, where they land. And then this would be the total count, right? And so you saw that each one of those primes, prime uh, palindromes showed up, you know, in the range of 200 times each. So that's why this goes up to 232. And then another depiction of that is we see right here that the prime one and prime one palindrome are showing up 232, 214 times, uh, which is pretty remarkable because when you, when you add all of that up, it seems to have some sort of balance, right? So if you took this blue graph here and add it to the salmon color, and then take the orange and add it to the light blue, you're gonna get a pretty flat uh, distribution. So there appears to be a mirror uh, type pattern. You can see kind of clusters here on, on a circular graph as well on where there appears to be patterning uh, in this. And, um, and that helps us to kind of look at it in, in different ways. So you can see the same clustering here with a very heavy clustering there, seeming to be about 180 degrees apart. So uh, this is as we as we feed this to AI, uh, all this information becomes really important because AI, much better than humans, at being able to look at patterns, and uh, we use AI then to interpret much much larger numbers. Now what this is is this is the jump index. So what we found is that we can rotate strings, and we can jump anywhere you see one of these sort of sawtooth endings. These small sawtooth endings uh, allows us to jump anywhere in the string so that we don't have to expend the computation time to just process, you know, a long string of numbers, which is particularly important when you're looking at, um, you know, these, uh, these very, very large uh, semi-prime numbers that could have, you know, trillions and trillions of digits in their period. You don't want to, if, if you know where the primes are going to show up, which we now do, then we can just jump to those locations uh, and, and I believe that this is the numerical equivalent of an Einstein-Rosen bridge. So uh, that you can rotate these very large number strings is a, is a novel discovery that we made 
uh, that I announced on, uh, on to social media some time ago. We're putting in into a paper as well. And you can see all these jump locations are going to be tied to exponential values. And that's because waves are based on wave doubling uh, mathematics, which is the same as, you know, one doubles two, two doubles four, four doubles eight, eight doubles 16, etc. We do the same thing here, but now you can see where this is overlapping with where the location of the prime factors are. So we can, we can jump to every location, you know, within a small number of digits to where those prime factors are in that long string, uh, which is really exciting. Because remember, we have, first of all, if you added up all of these, we know that there's 883 targets for us to go after in a 2.1 million digit string. Now, that's a dramatic reduction in the search space uh, compared to normal exponential uh, search that happens. Now, this is also where we can see the jump indices, and this is when we go outside of uh, the exponents of a thousand. So now we've got, it breaks down into much, much smaller segmentation. So as you go to higher and higher exponents, you can get greater and greater granularity of where the rotation uh, basically works on the string. So you can kind of jump exactly to a location that you would like to jump to, which is another very exciting thing, because look at the beauty of this pattern right here. And then uh, you can actually look at the numbers in their numerical form. So if we just look here, we, we truncate the number by taking off all the zeros in the beginning. And you can basically figure that if you've got a 12 digit number, you'll have 12 zeros uh, after the decimal position, then, then you'll get into the regular numbers of the period. And uh, you know this is 2.1 million period. So everywhere you see the orange is where we're seeing you know, these wave patterns basically show up. So you'll see sort of a gap. And if I go fast on this, you can kind of see a pattern. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to go faster than, than what, um, you know, uh, the, the computer screen is able to, the refresh rate is, if I kind of go too fast on it. But for me, that's how I look at it. I look at this in super speed, and I see a pattern just by looking at it in super speed. Uh, call me weird, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I see patterns and then we, we identify from those patterns and we start doing more numerical and, and, and AI analysis uh, so that we can dig deeper into that. But you can see everywhere it's orange is either a prime number or a prime palindrome. And it's very, very consistent straight through the whole thing. So this is a very exciting analysis. Now, wh where did this one land? Well, we were able to land precisely on prime palindrome one uh, here. So with a particular exponential power, we were able to land exactly on the number. So I can look at that through what we call elemental binding. So, uh, so I can remember prime palindrome one, and it is on the right side. So on the right side, prime palindrome one, and then the value was 16092. And this tends to be uh, always divisible by 36, interestingly. Um, so, so basically the string, remember, is 2.1 million digits in length, but now, uh, I was able to use an exponent to rotate the string so that I began the string at the 695,871st digit, which is, you know, call it about a third of the way through the string. And where I landed is exactly where prime one palindrome was. Uh, without any space in between. And we, we found there's a very high correlation between um, expansions that use binary and trinary numbers and locations within their string of uh, the locations of the prime and prime factors So and their palindrome. So uh, it appears as well that there's also another way of palindromic mirroring that happens. And, and actually, that numbers actually turn upside down too. So there's a, there's a, 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 a third way of number analysis that we have not integrated into this that we will. Uh, for example, 199 uh, would show up as 166 uh, sometimes. So there's a, there's a third way of, of looking at this that somehow nature mirrors in these wave patterns. And that's uh, kind of a really beautiful thing. Another thing we can do is we can look at, you know, all these different ways of interpolating the data. So this would give me all the jump zones that I can go to within a number. So if I multiply it by, for example, uh, if I rotate it by, uh, it looks like nine, right? In this case, I can actually get to a jump index that takes me all the way to the end of the string. So I can skip all the computation time necessary to get to the end of the string 
uh, by starting in a regular progression, and I just multiply it, you know, and, and take it over, uh, take the one over x, multiply it by nine, and I end up with that uh, much of a rotation. And then I can basically titrate and figure out where I want to land. If I want to land exactly in the middle, right, then that would suggest that I want to be somewhere, um, you know, kind of like, it's going to land me right here. So I would get really close to it by landing here. Or I would go with higher exponential powers. And if I go to higher exponential powers, then you can see uh, it's going to give me, you know, a lot of other different choices in, in the locations of the jumps. But the nice thing is, is that at each one of these locations right here, we generally find uh, where the primes are. And that's, uh, that's really nice. It also seems to follow it's kind of a Fibonacci, Fibonacci pattern, as we would expect, I guess. But um, anyway, very exciting stuff that we've been working on and uh, happy to, uh, to share this also with the world. We've been working on it, obviously, for a number of months. And um, I think uh, this is going to be pretty impactful. So we can generate another key. And this is, uh, this is uh, a little bit different, and I think we... Actually, we'll go to a different one because we're, we're doing some work on the site right now. So here's another key that we basically just, uh, that I just ran. And in this particular case, you got a public key of, of 14 million and period length of 3.5 million digits. And again, we landed exactly on prime one um, with uh, this particular exponent. And the number of primes showing up predicted was 1377 versus 1374 actual. So that's very, very accurate. So that's very close to pi over 8. Uh, you can see the string is the same. And look, there seems to be almost a perfect mirroring of the number of times the primes and prime uh, palindromes are working. So let's see if I can run another one here. And here's another one. We get to two digits within two digits using a larger exponential uh, here. And you can see also a pretty tight clustering of, uh, of, of the values, 42 versus 55 and 44 and 47. So again, a very tight clustering and the prediction value of 194 versus 188 actual, so pretty close. And, um, and then I can run it, let's see, one more time. Um, and here's another one. We land within one digit. Frequency predicted is 1429. 1402 is actual. And we have prime factors showing up all the way through the string as well. And again, a very tight clustering of how many times the primes are showing up in the string. You can see it here too. And then also you can see the number of jump locations that we can go to within this particular period. So uh, with that, everyone have a great weekend and uh, see you soon. Bye.